So Min, right. for any Kit Gear readers are not aware of your brand, which seems unlikely, can you give an idea of where Razer came from? Well, you know, essentially we have a single motto for gamers by gamers, and we are probably the world's largest um, gamer lifestyle brand at this point of time. So we design anything from hardware devices to software platforms. But what we do is that we're really hyper-focused on just one person, and that's the gamer. And that's what we are. From Razer's perspective, you know, we always think that we are always pushing ahead in terms of product line. We don't care if um, a much larger company says that, no, that's not possible, etc. But yes, you know, we think that um, we've got some of the best engineers, we've got some of the best designers, and we've probably got that bit of that mindset. Um, and it's kind of reflected in the best of CES wins that we've had. We're the only company in the history of, um, the best, uh, of CES that's won the best of CES five times in a row. And that's one of those things that should be reserved to the big boys. But here we are. Something a lot of companies spend time chasing is the idea of being cool. And a lot of them, bless their cotton socks like Microsoft, always manage to miss it. Sure. Whereas NVIDIA seem to land on it every time they bring out a new product. You guys are fundamentally cool. Is that an accident or by design? I don't think we actively pursue it. But um, it's, it's really our focus. At any point of time, we just design great products for gamers. And, and I think we are able to kind of identify their unwanted needs, etc. And be able to kind of design that to fruition, to, to reality. And that's one of those things that you know, when gamers look at it, they say, that's really cool, or shut up and take my money, or I'm throwing you know, money at the screen and nothing's happening. So that's something that we've been able to do over and over, primarily because we're gamers ourselves. Your products have wide appeal, but they're really more like um, tools for serious users or professionals. They really mm -hmm. are the kind of tools for the sport. Esports has been a bit of an up and down roller coaster over the years. I can think of at least three waves, and we're now sure. probably into the third one, Absolutely. where it looked like it was going to kick and mm -hmm. then for some reason didn't. And I think one of the challenges has been that there hasn't been the depth to the characters at the top. Mm -hmm. It's more like um, American professional wrestling, mm -hmm. where there's a, two or three people that are really sure. famous and, and no one else behind it. Do you think that we're past the days of the roller coaster? Do you think esports can now see genuine growth? I think at Razer, for us, esports is part of our DNA. And we've gone through those roller coasters, as you've mentioned. You know, we've seen companies come, we've seen companies go. And what the different thing for us at Razer is that because it's so ingrained with us um, at the company, we don't care. We just know that we are supporting esports. We've supported more tournaments or more teams than ever before. The Team Razer brand is probably the best known brand in esports at this point of time. But right now, I think what we're truly excited about is that we're not seeing some of these fly-by-night sponsors and stuff like that uh, coming in and out of the industry. We're seeing you know, even the game publishers and developers themselves, like Riot or, or Valve, coming in to support eSports. So I think this might just be it, but no matter whether this is just another upswing or a downswing that's going to come through for eSports, Razer is here for eSports and we're going to be here for a long time to come. Recent Blade laptops actually did really well on Kit Guru. You didn't have a global PR launch, but we thought the products were really cool, so we went out of our way to get hold of them from stateside. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's got to, got it's got to be done. Um, do you have plans to take the Blade Pro interactive touchpad system further in the future? Is that an area you're going to look into doing more? I think you know all our technologies are stuff that we take a really long-term view to it. Um, and we work closely with ISVs, like um, game developers and publishers, um, and we, we'd see how it goes. You know, we, we try new technology, we try new things that we think um, will push the envelope of technology, and some things stick, some things don't, but uh, definitely we tend to have a really long-term view of every single technology that we are behind. One of the strengths of Razer has got to be the fact that you've been so focused. How do you balance the idea of being effectively number one in your original chosen historical market and the temptation to bring the brand out wider? I think primarily because Razer is not really a business for us. Um, most of the other businesses, they look at how do I expand my, my revenue? You know, how do I get more profits, etc. At Razer, we've, our, our vision right from the get-go has always been on the gamer and we've never changed that. We don't intend to change that. I think for some of the companies that you've mentioned, maybe today gaming is important for them, but Tomorrow, if something else is the flavor of the month, they move on to, to focus on something else. For us, you know, we are focusing on gamers before it's cool. Now it's cool, and maybe someday it's not going to be cool anymore. But still, we'd still be designing things for gamers. And we've had, you know, um, industries approach us, whether it's um, from healthcare or, or, or the military. They've come to us to say, 
you know, your, your technologies can be used in all these other um, areas. Would you like to come design products for ourselves? We've said, you know, we're happy to license your technologies, you're happy to, to loan it out there. But when it comes down to designing products, could we design products for the military or the healthcare? Absolutely. Do we want to? Probably not. You know, we enjoy what we do. Um, it's not a business for us. We just like to have fun and, um, you know, focusing on gamers is something that we've always done before and we'll always do. You're talking about a focus on the gamers and we had a look at some of your new products uh, off camera before we started. So for the audience, um, around the 16th of June, what is the cool stuff? Sure. So on the 16th of June, which is uh, E3, um, essentially we're going to be probably reinventing the thing that we're best known for. So we invented the gaming mouse. Now we didn't just invent a product with the Razer Boomslang. We pretty much invented an entire industry. Now today if you go down Computex and stuff like that, it's crazy. I see gaming mouse companies left, right and centre. I see gaming keyboards, headphones and things like that. We've essentially created this entire industry. Yep. And in terms of gaming mice, we've created all these benchmarks. Benchmarks that are used by all gaming mice out there. We create benchmarks for the sensors, etc. And what we're going to be launching at E3 is what we are calling the world's most advanced gaming mouse, by far. And why is it the most advanced gaming mouse? Pretty much it's using the most precise gaming sensor in the world. It's the most precise out there. We've got a whole new revolutionary adjustable click force system for the buttons. And we're also amping up what we've done for the wired wireless technology that we presented with the Razer Mamba back in 2009. And all of this, we're going to be using it under the really successful Razer Mamba name. So we're calling it the new Razer Mamba. So one of the specs I looked at, correct me if I'm wrong, instead of the usual 1600 DPI, one of the specs I looked at, tell me if I'm wrong, instead of the usual 1600 DPI, you seem to have an extra zero on the end. Have I read that correctly? You've absolutely read that correctly. So it's the world's most precise gaming sensor. And what we're calling it the world's most precise gaming sensor, it's got a 16,000 DPI sensor. Now, is everyone going to be using 16,000 DPI? Absolutely not. But is a significant amount of uh, our users going to be using it? Absolutely. For those of whom we use multi-monitor setups, 16,000 DPI is great for the users. Now, what's more important is that we've also moved to be super, super precise in the sense that now you've got one DPI increments. In the past, you could only do like 50 DPI increments. Now, every single DPI natively tracking, no interpolation of sorts. That's what the new 5G laser sensor is going to be able to do. On top of that, we've got 0.1 millimeter liftoff cutoff. That's insane. I think everything else out there today is one millimeter at least. So that's the world's most precise gaming sensor by far. And that's going to be presented in the new Razer Mamba. How much of the ideas that you put into these products come directly from professional gamers and how much are you guys you, yourself and the original team still involved in the design. What's the balance between the, the, like, uh, the design dreamers at one end and the guys who are actually driving at the other end? Is it, is it like a, an F1 team where the guy driving has some feedback but also you've got some long-term strategies coming from the designers? What's the balance? I think the majority of ideation or ideas actually come from the design team. So what happens is that the design team you know, is still very actively involved. Um, Myself, um, we've got, we are probably the only company um, in this space that does all the design from ideation all the way to, to ID, to mechanical EE, all the way to ma uh, mass production. So all of that, we've got um, a tech center out of Austin, we've got uh, design centers out of San Francisco, Taiwan and Singapore, all of which work conjunctively to really focus on all these new products. Now, what we do is that we come up with uh, prototypes and concept designs that are then validated and tested by the esports athletes. And this is this constant iteration that goes back. We send them prototypes, they use them. Some of them actually use them in tournaments that you don't necessarily know that they are actually prototypes that are used in tournaments. So it's this constant iteration. They, they come back and say, oh, this could be a little faster, this could be a little uh, larger, or this is too, too big, etc." And we constantly iterate over and over again. And this process could take months, if not years. OK. So you've got the big launch coming up at uh, E3. Are we going to see, given now you're on your global tour, are we now going to see Razer pick up the rate of delivery for new products without giving the game away? Or <laughs> is, it still, is it still going to be fairly steady? Yeah, the thing about Razer is um, we tend to have very few product lines, I mean, compared to most other, other companies. You know, um, 
we have a few you know, models of mice, we've got maybe two models of keyboards, um, two models of uh, laptops, etc. We tend to take a really long time in designing and, and perfecting product. Um, and oftentimes, what we like to say is that every single product that we launch, there are tens of products that get killed in the interim to get to that point. So I don't think you're going to be able to see anything change. I think we're still going to take our time in terms of perfecting the product. But what I can guarantee is that every single product that we come up with is going to be worthy of the Razer brand name. One last question. Um, you spoke about creating the whole genre, and I think that's fair to say it's true. Um, do you think, does it, if you, when you see all these other companies, power supply companies, and God knows what, pumping out mice and keyboards, do you feel a little bit um, upset that these people are encroaching, or do you say that imitation is the most sincere form of flattery? Well, a lot of them imitate, and uh, some of them totally rip off, which is, um, I think, common in the industry. But I think it's a good thing. I think having great choices is, is great. Now, the, the only difference is, I think for Razer, we are setting the benchmarks. We're the only guys that have got true technology that's really pushing it forward in terms of designing it and making sure they set um, each and every one of these um, new standards for everyone out there. Um, what I do hope to see, however, is that it's less of a business for some of them where they say, okay, great, gamers, that seems like a great um, uh, business right now. We're all going to move our components business or whatever to talk about gaming and just slap on the word gaming for that and, and try to sell it for premium. Now, that's something that disappoints me. Um, I would love to see a lot more research and development. I would love to see a lot more investment in, in the community um, as opposed to just trying to move product um, out there. So I think it's a good balance. I like to see lots more new players because it's really giving the choice to users. I'm a gamer myself. I want to be able to see great amount of choice to the gamers. But I think what's more important is that I'd love to see a lot more hardcore R&D, a lot more real technology, as opposed to companies that go out to, to a factory in China and then slap on their brand or something like that. So that's one of those things I'd love to be able to see in the future. So you're happy for more people to come into the field, more products to come in the field, and you're still, you're still happy you're going to win? Well, we know we're going to win. But, um, I think primarily because we are really focused on two things. The first of which is the actual technology itself. Um, we're light years ahead, we're generations ahead. For example, the Razer Mamba. It's been um, the standard of its own for the wireless technology and still remains that. Um, you know, the Death Adder, it's, the, it's a decade since we've launched the Death Adder and still it's the staple, it's the benchmark for which all other eSports mice are measured on. But I think over and above what I'd love to see it's is um, more contribution to the second thing that we are really great at, which is working well with the community. We've got a hardcore community that we talk to all the time through Twitter, through Facebook, etc. I would love to see a much larger gamer community out there. And that's one of those things that um, I think having more companies involved with esports or more companies involved with um, gamer products, that would be great for everyone. Well, we look forward to seeing more of your products on Kit Guru. Min, thanks for your time. Thank you so much. Cheers. Thank you.